Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be going over the Terra Moons Spring 2023 release. We're going to be doing some live eye swatches, regular swatches, and comparisons. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you're not following me on Instagram already, please give me a follow over there. That's my main platform. I received this collection in PR from Terra Moons to do paid swatches for their website. This video is not sponsored in any way. It should not be considered an endorsement of the products. I'm just going to show you what they look like, give you some of my initial observations, and show you how they compare to other shadows from Terra Moons and other brands. We're starting off with eye swatches and this footage is going to look kind of weird at times because <laughs> I thought I was recording the audio and it wasn't so I'm like talking. This shade is called Enceladus and I definitely thought it was pronounced like enchilada like Enceladus. Anyway it's a grayish sagey teal multi-chrome. I don't really see too many shifts to be honest with you. My first impressions were that it feels really soft in the pan and kind of loosely packed. It reminds me of some of the Davina formulas, like the sugar drops if you're familiar. This is what I would consider more of a topper shade. I'm kind of applying it pretty opaque here, but it can be sheared out to a very PC and dimensional kind of transparent finish. It's pretty, I see a bluish purple shift here, but again, I don't know that I would consider this a multi-chrome. Next up, we have a shade called Rosette, and this is one of the duo chromes. And my first thought about this is it, it reminds me of the shade Starburst from Terra Moons. I'll compare it later, but like a grungier, more muted version. It has like a lilac base and a bunch of different colored sparkles. I see mostly blue and teal, and it doesn't feel as like gritty as some of the other duo chromes. I'd say it's more of a creamy feeling shadow. Really pretty, has almost like a wet look finish. I think anyone who likes spicy neutrals would enjoy this. Next up, Serpents. This is another duo chrome, and this is like a lime green with blue to purple to pink sparkles. It's very sheer in the base, kind of reminds me of some of the previous duo chromes like Light Speed and Celestial Petal, like how they have that sheerish base with the sparkles on top. So this one is a little bit more textured and gritty feeling than the previous duochrome I just showed you, Rosette. It's very sparkly in the finish. The shade is called Rhea and it's another duochrome. It has basically all of the same qualities as Serpents. So it's the same type of texture, finish, and feeling. It also has that same like blue to purple to pink shift. The main difference is that instead of a lime green base, it has a sky blue base. Still very sheer. Um, it looks a little bit more potent because the blue is darker than the lime green in the last shade. This shade is called Pollux and it's a chameleon shadow. It's like a goldenrod yellow with hot pink to orange to gold shifts in it. It's pretty sparkly, like it has a layer of opaque goldenrod yellow and then on top it has the shifting pigment which is like I said like hot pink to orange to gold and maybe a little bit of chartreuse. I was pretty excited when I first swatched this because I feel like a lot of times with yellow shimmers or just yellow eyeshadow in general, the pigment is like not there. Like you don't see that yellow coming through. It's very sheer or just like not good. It definitely shows through at least on my skin tone. I think this would look amazing on medium to deep skin tones. This shade is called Caster and it's a very bright chartreuse shimmer. It's in the traditional Terra Moons shimmer formula. So it's got like a metallic finish, very small particle size. I guess I'm showing you that you can apply it with a brush. I think I was talking about that in the original clip. Um, not much to say about this. It's just like standard Terra Moons shimmer formula. It's a pretty color. I don't really have anything like this in my collection. I'm just trying to show you a couple more angles because I was working on figuring out my lighting situation. Okay, here we have our first spicy boy. This one is called Eris and it's like a teal base with a super fiery reddish orange to gold to green shift. Now, I think this might be Terra Moon's version of Mural from Cleona, except obviously way chunkier, way flakier, has the same texture as the Cosmos and a lot of those other shades. This shade is called Winter Sun, and I put it with the pinks, but honestly, I don't know what color it is. It is extremely chunky. 
I'm going to show a comparison of the texture later on. But this shifts from pink to orange to gold to green and from a really harsh angle I do see a bit of teal. I don't know that there's a base to it but at the same time I wouldn't consider it an iridescent. It just has a very very large particle size. I would almost say it's like a pressed flaky. This one's called Proxima, and I'm predicting that a lot of people are going to really, really like this one. It's not fully opaque, but it just radiates this super intense, fiery, reddish-orange to gold to green pigment. I would say this is in the sublunar family. I'll do a comparison um, at some point in this video. Really intense, really spicy. I'm not a huge orange eyeshadow girly, but I think I will get a lot of use out of this just because look at it. It's like flames. This one's definitely flaky and textured, not quite as intense as Winter Sun, the one I just showed you. I'd say it's closer to Eris, which is similar to the texture of the Cosmos. This one is called Sirius. It's a shimmer, one of the traditional Terra Moon shimmer formulas. Not too much to say about this. I'd say the orange tone in it is pretty similar to that of Proxima from like straight on. If you like Terra Moon Shimmer Formula and you like this color, you'll probably enjoy it. This one is called Pistol Star, and I noticed with this one as well, it's chunkier and flakier than the normal chunky, flaky shades. Um, it has a blue base, and it shifts from pink to gold to green to teal. Reminds me of the Cosmos in a way, but more like icy. I think this would have been a really cool release in the winter collection. It's giving me like frozen ice princess vibes. From this point forward, I'm just going to have more and more sparkles on my face. I didn't realize it was this bad, but the macro lens does not lie. I didn't use any eye primer. I just raw dogged it because I was doing so many eye swatches. So yeah, it is what it is. This shade is called Calypso, and my first thought when I swatched this was that it reminds me of the exact same thing as Star Sign, except deeper and more indigo leaning. And I noticed that on Terra Moon's post, they said the exact same thing. So I would say if you have Star Sign, you probably don't need this. You could just layer it over like a deeper base. <laughs> I was shocked by how bad that looked. I was getting to the point where I stopped caring if the swatches looked good. But anyway, this is a duochrome. It has a similar texture to Rhea and Serpents. The biggest difference is that this has a much more opaque base. The shade is called Milky Way and it has a like charcoal gray base with a bunch of orange sparkles mixed in and the orange part is what shifts from orange to gold to green. It's moderately textured and chunky, not as intense as some of the extreme multi-chromes I showed you earlier. This shade conceptually reminds me a lot of one from a previous release called Celestial Cloudscape, which was like a royal blue with those same types of sparkles on top the biggest difference is with celestial cloudscape it was like a smooth base with the sparkles on top this is like overall textured and chunky hallie's comet is another duochrome and this one stood out to me right away it's like barbie pink vomited sparkles all over and you're in outer space flying on a meteor it's so sparkly so shiny so pink <laughs> it's like a lot more intense and reflective than the other duochromes i'm going to compare it to some similar pink shades later and you'll see what i mean the shade is called adhara and it's another shimmer i was really drawn to this one because as you may know i'm in my pat mcgrath era and this reminds me a lot of the one blitz shade from the first mothership palette which is one i am very into right now anyway um it's a traditional shimmer formula it has a metallic satiny finish of the four shimmers this one is definitely my favorite and i'm excited to use it to like deepen up a look last shade this is called dione and it's another shimmer word to the wise this stained the ever loving shit out of my eyes and my arm when i swatched it it stained it like a bright bright pink so just be aware of that i don't really care too much about staining i just wasn't expecting it like a deep periwinkle with a pearly metallic finish we're going to do some hand swatches before we get into comparisons. At the time I filmed this, I wasn't sure 100% which ones were duochromes versus chameleons versus multichromes, so I kind of just grouped them in a way that made sense to me. These are all shimmers, so starting from the wrists, we have Dione, Adhara, Castor, and Sirius. Next up, we have the three spicy meatballs. I think these are all extreme multi-chromes. We have Winter Sun, 
Proxima and Eris. Here we have some of the cooler tone shades from wrist up. We have Milky Way, Calypso, and Pistol Star. Here are some blue, green, and teal tones. We have Rhea, Serpents, and Enceladus. And I think you can see a little bit more of the shifts in Enceladus here. Here's a group of the last three. We have Rosette. Halley's Comet, and Pollux. Starting off, I just wanted to contextualize some of these multichromes with some iridescence so we can see what the shifts are like. So we have Proxima, Winter Sun, Terra Moon's Sublunar, Shined by SD Radar and Eris. Um, it's hard for me to tell what Proxima is closer to, either Sublunar or Radar. Maybe you can let me know what you think in the comments. Um, Winter Sun is definitely closest to Sublunar, and I'd say Eris is closest to Radar with that orange. So obviously I received the spring collection in PR. Um, any of the comparison shades, if I receive them in PR, I'll put an asterisk next to them. In some of these, I may have done paid work for the website, like swatches for the website. So I'll put that in which ones in the description I did that for. Also, any comparisons in here that you don't see, um, leave a comment. Just let me know what you want to see. I'll do it on my Instagram stories closer to the launch date. I may not have the shade, but if I do, I'd be happy to compare it on my stories. Here we have Terra Moon's Big Dipper, Terra Moon's Perihelion, Shine by SD Next Level, Terra Moon's Ganymede, and Eris. These all have pretty much an identical texture and honestly with some of these I feel like it's splitting hairs to point out the small differences. Um, I don't think you need all of them. Ganymede and Next Level have a very sheer teal base and Perihelion has a slightly more opaque. Big Dipper has the most opaque and it's more of a soft pink in that like straight on shift than the others. Here we have Proxima, Shine by SD Obsessed, Terra Moon's Flare Star, Terra Moon's Musifii, and Winter Sun. Again, I mean, I don't know how different these are all going to look on the eyes. I definitely think Proxima is the most unique out of this group. They're all beautiful, but like, do you really need them all? Probably not. All of these have the same texture except for Winter Sun. As I noted before, it's notably more flaky and chunky than the others. We've got a bunch of red and orange tones here. We have Shine by SD, Darkened Flame, Terra Moon's Venus in Chains, Terra Moon's Arcturus, Terra Moon's Aurora Australis, Terra Moon's Martian Dust, Proxima, and Cleona Saffron. Darkened Flame has a deep base and is more sparkly than like chunky textured. Venus and Chains and Arcturus have a super vibrant red and orange base and they're more like dense feeling than some of the other multichromes. Aurora Australis, Martian Dust, and Proxima all have the same texture. Proxima I don't really think has too much of a base. And then saffron is a completely different texture and finish. It's more of a like pearly, satiny, metallic finish. Got some yellows here. We have Terra Moon's Lightspeed, Terra Moon's Lyra, Divina Vela, Shine by SD Dangerous, 
Terra Moons, Pollux, and Terra Moons, Solar Delirium. So Dangerous and Pollux are really the only ones where I truly see that yellow base show through. Dangerous is more of a true primary yellow and Pollux is more of like a golden yellow. The rest, it's like a very, very sheer base or any yellow that you see is from like the actual shifting pigment. Pollux has the second most flaky texture out of all these and Solar Delirium has the most flaky texture. It has that similar texture to like the Cosmos and some of the other multichromes in this collection. Here are some of the regular shimmer comparisons. I didn't have too much to compare them with. We have Terra Moon's Moon Lily versus Dion, Terra Moon's Axes versus Sirius, and Davina Orion versus Castor. We have some cool tone muted shades here. Terra Moon's Atomic Division, Terra Moon's Prism Skies, Terra Moon's Shattered Stars, Terra Moon's Cosmic Dancer, Enceladus and Divina Earthshine. Earthshine is not a multichrome, but I included it because the like tone of it reminded me of Enceladus. So hopefully that can give you some context of what it actually looks like in person. Um, I don't really think it's super similar to any of these, but it has a similar vibe. I would say it's more dimensional and sparkly than any of the Terra Moon shades to the left. Here we have Shine by SD Retro, Terra Moon's Radial Velocity, which is one of the shades they sell on Amazon, Cleona Ripple, Serpents and Divina Water Mist. The green in Serpents has a lot more yellow in it than any of the other greens here. I would say some of the others are more in the teal territory or like aqua. Also, Serpents is more sheer and more sparkly than any of the others. Some more blues here. We have Terramoon's Planet X, which is from their Cosmic Monitor palette. Shine by SD Diva, Adhara, Terra Moon's Magnetosphere, which is an Amazon shade, Cleona Crown Jewel, Cleona Seal, which is the original formulation, Rhea, and Half Moon. So none of these are super similar. I would say Seal is the closest to Rhea. Has more gold to it and not quite as sparkly. Half Moon has a much more sheer base and I'd say it's more of a teal than like a sky blue like Rhea is. Here we have even more blues that shift pink. We have Divina Midnight Nova, Shine by SD Revenge, Shine by SD Pacific Blue, Terra Moon's Star Sign, Terra Moon's Calypso, Terra Moon's Hyperbolide, and Carla Cosmetics Lazy Bones. So I don't know if you can see what I was talking about earlier, but Star Sign is literally so similar to Calypso. The only difference is the base of it. So I really don't think you need both. If you have Star Sign, just put it over like a deeper blue and you will have the exact same effect. Last set of blues, we have Shine by SC Takeover, Terra Moon's Stellar Apotheosis, Terra Moon's The Cosmos, Pistol Star, Terra Moon's Oppie, and Cleona Emblem. So Pistol Star is definitely more cool tone than the others. Takeover, Stellar Apotheosis, Cosmos, and Oppie have all the same texture, and Pistol Star is more chunky and flaky than the others, and Emblem is more of a smooth, shiny finish. Here we have Terra Moon's Midnight Winter, Terra Moon's Witch's Room Nebula, Terra Moon's Exoplanet, Milky Way, Protostar, and Terra Moon's Solar Expansion. So I would say none of these are necessarily dupes. It does kind of remind me of Exoplanet, but obviously the texture and finish is very different. Exoplanet is more of a like creamy, metallic finish. Here I just did a quick comparison of Milky Way and Celestial Cloudscape because I talked about it earlier. They both have that like base with the orange sparkles on top that do the shifting. Hopefully you can see what I mean about how these sparkles kind of feel more separate in Celestial Cloudscape. We have Cleona Cathedral, Cleona Cobblestone, Shine by SD Sweetie, Terra Moon's Terrestrial, Rosette, and Terra Moon's Starburst. So I said on Terra Moon's post that like Rosette reminds me of a grungier, more muted version of Starburst. 
So I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about here. It has that like shiny wet look to it, but not quite as vibrant and a little more cool tone and murky. Last group of comparisons, we have Terramoon's Lost in Space, Davina Marshmallow Pillows, Hallie's Comet, Davina Cream Puff Cuddles, and Terramoon's Aphelion, which is the last of the Amazon shades. So hopefully you can see what I'm talking about here, which is where I was saying that Hallie's Comet is much more like in-your-face, intense, sparkly Barbie pink. Wanted to give a visualization of the different particle sizes slash finish of some of these more chunky, flaky shades. So we have the Cosmos, which is like something I thought the most people would be familiar with. Then Winter Sun, which is extra flaky and chunky. You see it doesn't apply as smooth. And then we have like literally straight up flakies. I don't know why I thought I could swatch them, but here I go trying again. And you can see the particle size is just a lot larger. Here's some close-up footage so you can see in more detail how they differ. And just to wrap this up, I wanted to show you my personal top four favorites from this collection. Eris, Proxima, Enceladus, and Halley's Comet. Those are the four I would keep if I could only keep four. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to let me know in the comments any more comparisons you'd like to see on my stories. And please give this video a like if it was helpful or you enjoyed it in any way. Bye!